In this video, we're going to look at stem and leaf diagrams. To start with, we're going to look at basic single stem and leaf diagrams, and then later on, we will look at back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagrams. So let's start off with single stem and leaf diagrams. In question one, it says the test scores of class 11X are shown below. So we've got 13, 8, 21, 23, 15, 17, 21, 32, 11, 9, 3, 10, and 24. In part A, we're asked to draw an ordered stem and leaf diagram to represent the data. What I'm going to do is draw a template for a stem and leaf diagram. It will look something like so. To the left of this line, we will have now our stem, and to the right, we will have the leaves. What we need to consider now is what we're going to put here for the stems. I look at this data set and think about the lower score, or the least value, and the highest score, or the greatest value. We can see that that's 3 and 32. So what I'm going to do here is choose tens for my stem. So I'm going to have zero tens, we'll have one ten, we will have two, and we will have three. This row here will represent all of the numbers, or all of the scores from zero to nine. This row will represent the scores from 10 to 19, this one 20 to 29, and this one 30 to 39. I don't have to introduce uh, number four as we've got no scores in the 40s. If my scores, for example, were 109, 113, 107, 121, 134, what we'd have again, we would have tens. I'd have 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, and 1, 3. This row here would represent the scores from 100 to 109. This one, 110 to 119. 120 to 129 and 130 to 139. So what we're going to do is look at filling this out and it must be ordered. There are two different approaches I can take. I'm going to do both methods. You can decide which you like. The first one is to do an unordered stem and leaf diagram and then simply put it in order. I'll do that one first and the way we do that is consider each number as it comes. So let's start with the number 13. Well, with 13, we've got 1, 10, and 3 units. So it's going to go in this row right here, and we simply put the 3 like so. Once I've done that, I'm going to put a line under it to tell myself I've already put that one in. Often, if students don't do it, they end up forgetting what they've put in and put numbers in more than once or forget to put numbers in. Whatever you do, don't cross it out, though, as if you make a mistake, you can't come back to it. Okay, now let's look at 8. Well, that's going to go just here, 0 tens and 8 units. So that goes there, 21. We put 21 here, 2 tens, 1 unit. 23. All I do is put a comma and then put a 3. 15. That's 1 and 5, 15. Comma after the 3, 5 goes in. 17. Comma after the 5, 7 goes in. 1 and 7 is 17. We got 21, so again, we put that just here, comma, 1. We've already got 21 in, but if we've got two of them, we need to put two of them in. If you've got five of them, you'd have five ones in here. So, just putting a little line. 32, 3 and 2 goes there. 11, I'm going to put that just there. We've got now 9, 0, 9. We've got 3, which will be 0, 3. We've got 10, which will be 1, 0. And finally, we've got 24, which is 2 and 4. So this is unordered. What I'm now going to do is order it. So below, I'm just going to fill out exactly the same numbers on the left-hand side. We've got 0 tens, we've got 1 10, we've got 2, we've got 3. I need to put these in order, smallest first. So in ascending order. 8, 9 and 3 is 3, 8 and 9. 3, 5, 7, 1, 0, 0, 1, 3, 5, and 7. 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 1, 3, 4, and 2 is there. This is now complete. All we need to do to finish it off is write a key. A key tells the reader what this shows. So if I put my key, I can choose any of these. I can write 2 and then a line 1 is equal to 21. 
So when the reader reads this and says, this is the test scores for class 11X, the key two, and then line one is 21. I could have chosen three, put a line and two, 32. One line five is 15. So that is complete. That is a single stem and leaf diagram that's ordered and has a key. So that was the first method. The second method, which I think is slightly um, more challenging, is to simply put them in order first. What I'll do, I'll just cover this up. Let's just cover this um, because there's always a tendency to just uh, look at what we've just done. This will obviously um, be easier because we've just done the, the numbers. Um, but what we'll do, we'll do this as we go. So this is putting it in straight away. So what I'm going to do, again, I put my 0, 1, 2, and 3 in. I'm now going to try and locate the numbers between 0 and 9 to go in here. Well, that is going to be 8, we're going to have 9, and we're going to have 3. So what I'm going to do is put these in order as 3, 8, and 9. So I've done it in order already. The next thing I'm going to do is consider numbers from 10 to 19. So we've got 13, we've got 15, we've got 17, we've got 11, and we've got 10. So in order, 10, 11, 13, 15, 17. And as you can see, we know these because we kind of half remember them from before. So 3, 5, and 7. Let's now look at the numbers between 20 and 29. Well, there's 21, there's 23, there's 21 again, uh, and there is 24. So if we order these, we'll have 1, 1, 3, and 4. And then finally, we've got now one number to go between 30 and 39, and that is 2, 32. And I'm going to write a key, and we're going to say on this, for example, 3, put my line 2, is equal to 32. And that is an ordered stem and leaf diagram. If we look at this right here, let's just kill that. We can see this is exactly the same. Um, no difference. The only thing I've done is just decided on a different key. In part B, we're asked to use the diagram to find the median, the mode, and the range of scores. What I'll do here is just cover these because, again, there's a tendency to, do, to look at these. What you would be uh, asked to do um, is simply use a stem and leaf diagram that you're given to do these. We've just constructed one. Essentially, what we're doing here is um, finding values from it and potentially interpreting it. So you won't have the luxury necessarily of having the numbers uh, here to, to work with these. So they might just give you a stem and leaf diagram and say, find these values. OK, I'm going to come back to the median. Um, we're going to look at the modal score and the range. The mode is the number that occurs most frequently. Here is the big cock up. Students put, oh, it must be this. We've got these two ones together. That must be the mode. The mode is 21 because 2 and then the line 1 is 21. If you've got more than one mode, write it down. So if, for example, we had a number 7 here, we would have two modes, 17 and 21. Let's now do the range. Well, the range is the highest take the lowest. The highest value is 32. The lowest value is 3. And that is going to give us 29. So that's the range. You've got a mode or modal value of 21. Now, here is the median. Students often mess this up. I, I prefer to count how many numbers we've got and then understand that if we've got an odd set of numbers, we find the middle. If we've got an even, we find the two in the middle and go halfway between. So how many numbers have we got? We've got three, we've got eight, we've got 12, we've got 13. So what I need to do, if we've got 13 numbers, I need to locate the seventh number. So what we'll have is six, then we'll have the seven, and then we'll have another six the other side. So the median score will fall on the seventh observation. So in order, that's a third, then we get up now four fifth, six seventh. It's this number right here. So we can say that the median, so the median is 15. That is taken off now the seventh observation. Um, another approach students like is for, to tick them off. That's the, the lowest, that's the highest. 
fats fat one fats that one fats fat one fats fat one fats that one fat one fat one fat one fat one fat one and they locate it um again the bigger the data set uh the harder that's going to be and also it's going to be fraught with danger if you don't do it in order again if you have two numbers in the middle just find the middle of those two numbers so as you can see um nothing crazy so we've gone ahead and done those okay in question two, it says class 11Y sat the same test as class 11X. The scores for the class are shown below. So these are the scores for class 11Y. 21, 19, 20, 29, 35, 27, 28, 33, 15, 19, 16, 47, and 34. So with this one, we've got five, we've got six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So again, 13 scores um, as before. In part A, we're asked to use an ordered back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram to represent the scores of class 11x and class 11y. What I'm going to do here is be cheeky and I'm going to steal what we've just done on the single stem and leaf diagram and construct a back-to-back -back ordered stem and leaf diagram from this. So here is my uh, original stem and leaf diagram and I'm just going to extend this. So all I'm going to do is just put this on here and then we will increase this like so. So to the right, and I'll just make this slightly longer, just looking at those numbers. To the right, what we're going to do is have, and we'll put on here, this, remember, is class 11x. This is the key for class 11x. This side, I'm going to put class 11y. What we've got here now are two sets of results. We've got the numerical data, which are the scores, and we've also got categorical data, which is the class. So we're looking at two different sets of data, one numerical and one categorical. What I need to do is simply, and I say simply, put these values into this stem and leaf diagram. This is slightly harder, as instead of working outwards from left to right we work outwards from right to left i could do it as an unordered and then an ordered but because i've already got this in i'm going to go straight at it and take a risk so looking at these numbers the first thing i'm going to do is introduce now into this right here this column a four because we got 47 so what I'm going to do is look for numbers between 0 and 9 for class 11y. If we look at it, there aren't any. Therefore, I can't put anything in this row right here. So let's now look at numbers between uh, 10 and 19. We've got 19, we've got 15, we've got 19, and we've got 16. So what I'm going to do is put these in order to the left of this. Let's check I've got them all. So this will go five, six, nine, nine. The five goes there, the six goes there, the nine goes there, and the nine goes there. So as you can see, again, it reads outwards. Um, it's just slightly less intuitive to do it this way. So let's just put that there, and that just there. That looks a bit neater. Let's now look at numbers between 20 and 29. Remember, this lies blank. Don't put a zero in it, because if you put a zero in, that will be a score of zero. Zero, zero is a score of zero. So let's now look. We've got 21, we've got 20, we've got 29, we've got 27, 28. Have we got any others in the 20s? The answer is no. So what's this going to do? This is going to do zero, one, we're going to have now seven, let's put seven, we're going to put eight, and we're going to put nine. That's done. Right, numbers in the 30s. We've got 35, we've got 33, and we've got 34. So this is going to be three, four, five, so the three goes there, the four goes there, and the five goes there. What you can, of course, do is in descending order from the largest to the smallest, from left to right, moving in. I prefer not to do it because often I run out of space and end up with a zero here or the zero just here. Um, and then finally, now all we've got to do is look at this one right here, and that is going to be the seven, and that goes there. What I'm now going to do is put a key for class 11Y, and this is slightly different. 
So key five line one is going to be equal to 15 and that is my key and you might want to write key for class 11. So if you want to put it here, class 11, uh, 11 Y and class 11 X key. So I've just put the key on there. Right, as you can see, that's different. 5, 1 is now 15 instead of 1, 5 because we're working from the left to the right. In part B, we're asked to compare the performances of the two classes using the diagram. Right, let's just... Uh, just knock out all of this stuff because again there's a temptation to look at it you might be asked to interpret this stem and leaf diagram in context rather than just construct one and, and talk about it so I'm not going to refer to these numbers in terms of comparing them we would be better comparing box plots because with box plots we have a, a bit more information in terms of the quartiles um, and so on and so forth but we can still make some comparisons with these the comparisons that I'm going to look at making first are the in terms of the median. With this one right here, we saw that the median score from the last part, if we look at it, I believe it was 15. So the median was 15. So what I'm going to do is put median is 15 here. What we need to do now is find the median here, and then we can look on average who was more successful. Median is a measure of average. Right, need to be careful. We know that there are 13 data uh, items in the data set, so we need to find now the seventh. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The median is 27. Again, you can tick this off if you want. Um, I wouldn't, I'd simply just count in. That's the smallest we need now, the seventh. Uh, because remember, these are in order now. Our original list wasn't in order. So what we need to do is compare. We can say on average class Y were more successful as the median score was higher. So that would be one comparison because we need to compare these in context. So on average class Y were more successful as their median score was higher. 27 versus 15. We can look at the range. We saw on here now that the range uh, from the previous one was 29. With the range on this one, so we can say now that the range um, on here is going to be the, the highest value, which is 47, not 74. 47 minus the lowest value. The lowest value on here is going to be 15. So that gives us now 32. So we can say now the range, um, it's like the interquartile range, it's a measure of spread. So we can say that class X was slightly more consistent as the range of scores was lower, 29 versus 32. So there are a couple of comparisons which you could make. Um, another comparison, the highest scorer in, was in class 11Y with 47. The lowest scorer was in class 11X with three marks. We can see now that the median value of class 11X was the lowest value of class 11Y. So you could say on here that half of the class in class 11X didn't score as high as the uh, score as well as the lowest score in class Y. So all of these comparisons to sort of show that you understand what these two, uh, the, these two sets of data show. Remember, when, when we do a, a stem and leaf diagram, a stem and leaf diagram is similar to a bar chart. It's just represented horizontally instead of vertically. If you took this and just rotated it, then you would see the distribution, um, assuming that you've got all of these in, in line um, in terms of the numbers, you would see the patterns emerging. Um, so there are a few comparisons, not necessarily exhaustive, but um, should give you some idea. So there we go, that's just looking at stem and leaf diagrams, initially single and then back to back.